two pipeline they help in the filtration of the blood so from where the blood is coming basically blood is directly coming from the heart with the help of aorta so aorta is directly pouring the blood this one aorta is pouring directly blood to the kidney and uh, it get bifurcated in both of the kidney left and right kidney so the uh, artery which takes the impure blood means the blood with urea that is called left renal artery and right renal artery so both respective artery they take blood to the kidney for the filtration inside the kidney there are certain small small filter these filter are basically the unit of the uh, unit of the kidney or we can say they are the basic functional and structural cell of the uh, kidney they are called nephron so nephron filter the urea and water it takes out some urea and take out some water from the blood and it make the urine so finally the urine formation takes place in the kidney so where does the urea formation takes place where does urea formation takes place tell me guys jasania where does urea formation takes place in last class i told you that urea formation takes place from the extra venous tube remember urea formation takes place in liver and uh, by urea cycle urea cycle so with the help of urea cycle urea formation takes place in liver right then urea get mixed with the blood and urine formation that takes place in kidney right so urine formation takes place here urine formation right so kidney approximately they are made up of one kidney is made up of approximately 10 lakh nephron right so they are basically made up of 10 lakh nephron so 10 lakh nephron are found in a single kidney and every nephron is worth like a filter then what happen the pure or filtered blood come back to the main line that is left renal vein and a right renal vein and finally the urine formation takes place and urine get collected into urinary sac right urine get collected in urinary bladder and when the urine when this uh, bladder get filled then what happen there there are some valve like muscles they are called sphincter the sphincter muscle open and we feel the urination so there are two sphincter muscle and we will discuss about those sphincter muscle right so this was the basic structure then come to the lateral section of kidney so basically ls of the kidney if we see then what happen you will see that there are outermost layer that is called renal fasciola then adipose capsule and then renal capsule so there are 10 pro, there are three protective covering renal fasciola adipose capsule renal capsule they protect kidney from the external injury and external uh, jerk right and inside the kidney there are basically two regions right the outermost region this part is known as the cortex renal cortex so this part is called renal cortex then you will find there is another part which is found there are the part between them they are called renal column right and medullary pyramid so these are the this green color structure which is shown they are renal column and they are between them there are medullary pyramid medullary pyramid they remains connected with uh, this structure this is called major calasis then there are branches called minor calasis right and uh, this part is called renal pelvis renal artery is bringing the blood in for the filtration renal vein is taking back the uh, filtered blood to the vena cava and that's how the filtration takes place right uh, one more very important thing which i want to share with you you can see i have tried to show it that half of the part of the nephron it is found in the cortex part and half of the part found in the medulla part right so 50% nephron is in cortex part 50% in medulla part then there is a urinary bladder so urinary bladder yes yes someone is saying okay so look uh, this is a uh, urinary bladder so urethra bringing the urine and it open in a structure this is a structure called trigone 
and this is the opening of urethra they open obliquely so and open from up to up to downward so uh, any valve does not open and this is the wall of urinary bladder and uh, this is the inner lining of urinary bladder they are made up of transitional epithelium and i have already told you there are two sphincter muscle so they, that that is the thing which you need to understand there are two sphincter muscle means there are two wall wall like uh, you must have seen that the wall in the pressure cooker and it open on the basis of pressure so what happen when urinary bladder get filled then this internal sphincter open so internal wall get open urine does not come out because external sphincter is still closed right this is involuntary so when you, you when you feel that you need to go for urination then your internal sphincter muscle have opened because this is the involuntary means it is not in your control when you really go to release the urine on that time the external sphincter open that is a voluntary that is open by your own wish but external sphincter can guard up to certain pressure after that pressure it will open automatically so it is not complete voluntary you can control urination for particular time period after that you can't control that right so this is the urinary bladder and where does it lie it lies in the pelvic cavity hope its structure must be clear to all of you clear yes sir okay so these were the structural unit now this is important it is nephron and i have told you that one nephron of uh, uh, one kidney is made up of approximately 10 nephron means 20 lakh plus nephrons are found in both of the kidney this is single nephron this yellow color structure is nephron right and around this yellow color there are some blood capillary which are uh, mess or entangled with the this uh, nephron right and the both are in contact with each other exchange of material takes place between the, the blood vessels and this bowman's cap this uh, nephron right uh, this structure is known as bowman's capsule this structure is known as bowman's capsule inside bowman's capsule there are glomerulus right the function of glomerulus is filter the blood comes in from the atrial from the renal artery then after the filtration blood goes back to the body from um, atrial from the glomerulus right then what happen that uh, from here the uh, filtrate part right so urine is sorry not urine i am sorry we cannot use urine term over here so what happen uh, when atrial bring the uh, blood and uh, this atrial it takes back the filtered blood what happened this bowman's capsule have a uh, filter like structure that is called glomerulus glomerulus take urea water and some nutrient right we cannot use urine term over here we call it that filtrate when then this filtrate passes through this structure this part is called pcp proximal convoluted tube right then this filtrate pass to the pcp then this filtrate goes to the this u shaped structure this is called loop of henle right loop of henle this this is called descending part this is called ascending part ascending part is impermeable to the water right then the filtrate reaches to the uh, this one dct distal convoluted tubule from dct it reaches to the collecting duct when filtrate passes through it these blood capillary reabsorb means take out the nutrient which are found in the filter layer they will take out the glucose they will take out the mineral they will take out the nutrient and then what will happen finally the urea and water will is will left with that and when it comes to this point where collecting that then you can use the urine term right so urine formation takes place actually in collecting that and uh, it takes place in the nephron only so is that clear the prone structure of nephron yes clear yes sir the most important part of this chapter one of the most important because there is one more important part 
one of the most important part of this uh, chapter is JGA. Uh, we call it juxta glomerulus apparatus. What is juxta glomerulus apparatus? Try to understand. So this is the structure of neuron, nephron. Then what happened? Where, uh, the pipeline which bring in the urea and blood, this is called afferent, afferent arteriole because afferent means that is bringing in something. And uh, after the filtration, when the blood goes out, this is called efferent artery. And here, this is called this is DCT, right? DCT come in contact with afferent and efferent. Let, is, let it enlarge. So this is enlarged. This is bromelurus, and this is podocyte cells, and this is just glomerulus capsule. Between the afferent, efferent, and DCT, there are certain cells I have tried to highlight with the yellow. They are these cells are called juxta glomerular apparatus, JGA. These JGA secrete a hormone called renin, right? Renin, uh, what renin do? Renin convert uh, into angiotensinogen, right? Angiotensinogen is an inactive form. Angiotensinogen get convert into angiotensin, and angiotensin is a response active form. It is responsible for increasing in the blood pressure. This is called JGA. You have to remember it. It is very important. Is it clear or not, JG? Yes, sir. No. Okay. This is the urine formation process. Don't get panic. The only thing which you have to remember that the thing which is highlighted with the blue. That's it. That is the only thing which you need to remember. Right? Okay. So try to understand. A friend is bringing in the blood. A friend is taking back the uh, filter. Then this filtrate enter into the here. This is filtrate. When filtrate reaches to PCT, proximal convoluted tubule, what happened? The filtrate have many important substances which will go in waste with the urine. So body do not want this important substance to go as a waste. So body will take back potassium, chloride. Sodium, hormone, glucose, amino uh, amino acid, and H2O means water. And 60% of the substance which are going as a waste, they will be absorbed over here because they are important for body. Body don't want to uh, lose anything as a waste. Now, when this filtrate will come to the this part, so this half of the part I have already told you, half of the part of the nephron is found in the cortex. Half of the part found in the medulla part, right? So half of the part is found in the cortex. This half of the part. It is found in the cortex. This half part. And this is this half part from this line downward to this line. This is found in uh, medulla, right? Now try to understand. So when the filtrate will uh, come down, this U-shaped structure is called loop of Henle. This pipeline is called descending loop, and this pipeline is called ascending loop. When it comes to the descending loop, it will absorb water. Water will be reabsorbed, right? And uh, then what will happen? That will go up, go up. This is called ascending limb. Ascending limb is impermeable to the water. That is important. I have made the star. Ascending limb is impermeable to water, but permeable to NaCl, permeable to salt, right? Then what will happen? Filtrate will go upside. When filtrate will go upside, it will reach to the DC, distal convoluted tube. When in DCT, very, very important thing the DCT, the sodium is absorbed, but not absorbed, not like that, like this way. Sodium is absorbed under the influence of a hormone that is called adrenal gland, right? 
adrenal gland cortex. Uh, ad, sorry, adrenal gland. Then water is absorbed under the influence of ADH hormone, right? Then it will come to the collecting duct. When it will come to the collecting duct, uh, sodium will be again absorbed under the influence of aldosterone. This is important. Sodium will be absorbed again the influence of aldosterone. Now from here onward, you can call this filtrate as a urine, right? Then sodium will be absorbed and uh, it is absorbed under the influence of aldosterone, right? Now finally, the filtrate which come out that is called unit. Urine is hypertonic to blood, means more concentrated to blood and isotonic to the medullary fluid. That's it. This is the story behind the urine formation. That's how the urine formation takes place. Try to uh, go through with it and tell me if you have any doubt. Sir, could you scroll up a bit? Yes. Is it okay? Sir, could you just scroll up a bit? Yeah, sure. Yes, sir. JGA and urine formation both are very, very, very important. So don't miss it. Uh, and you know, uh, you won't find this diagram. I have made it for your convenience so that you get all the things. If you will go, go through with this literature, you will really get good. Right. This is the easiest way to learn. And you know, all the if uh, if you are remember all if this is not very Herculean task. This is not Herculean task to remember all this. Uh, blue colored part right if you remember all blue colored part you will be able to solve every question believe on me so uh that is the is there any question martin iram no sir. anna samira samira no sir okay have you know all good? Getting everything? Yes, have you know? Okay. Micturation. That is just release of the urine. Right. How does the release of the urine is controlled? Right. Look. The only question here from here can be asked that which is called nerve of filling, which is called nerve of emptying. What does it mean? Try to understand. Nerve of filling means which nerve help to close urinary bladder so that it get filled, right? Means which nerve help the loading of urine in urinary bladder. Nerve of emptying, which nerve command or help in the release of urine so that the urinary bladder get empty. So which help in filling, that is called nerve of filling. Which help in emptying it, that is called nerve of emptying. So, this is called sympathetic nerve. Sympathetic nerve, it is L1 and L2. This is called nerve of filling. Try to understand. Symp sympathetic nerve is called nerve of filling, right? Look. From here, from L1, LL2, two nerve, one nerve come to the urinary bladder and another nerve reaches to the internal sphincter, right? This is called nerve of filling, right? It relaxes ureter, right? So it relaxes urinary bladder. So the urinary bladder will relax, right? And so that what will happen, it will, be, it will uh, uh, inflate and urine will get filled. And it is it help in the contraction of which one internal sphincter so internal sphincter remains closed so now it is getting filled when it will get filled then what will happen this is autonomous it will work autonom auto autonomous way means it, it is not under your control so what will happen now what will happen after that there is a parasympathetic nerve parasympathetic nerve try to understand one goes to the here where one goes to the renal bladder and another goes to the uh, internal sphincter it is called nerve of emptying. What happened? It help in, not it help, it, it, it is responsible for contraction of u uterus. Uh, so uh, what will happen? When contraction of uterus will take place, pressure will be built. 
and then what will happen it relax the sphincter it open the sphincter so now this internal sphincter will open when you will go for the urination so both are not in your control both are what sympathetic and parasympathetic both are autonomous now what will happen when you will when when you will go for the urination and you want to release it then it, it comes to the somatic nerve somatic nerve is voluntary it is under your control and somatic nerve help in release of the urine is that clear or not tell me these all three are question there are three question which is called nerve of emptying which is called nerve of uh, filling which is uh, uh, which is called uh, what is the function of somatic nerve tell me guys is it clear marita can you explain the somatic nerve part again yeah sure uh, look when a person feel it come that uh, suppose that anybody is taking class so when a person is feeling that i need to go for urination right then what will happen on that time sympathetic nerve is stop working parasympathetic have started working it is putting the pressure on urinary bladder and internal sphincter open now the person came to know that he or she have to go for urination when that person will reach for release of the urine on that time it will give command from the brain and this somatic nerve will open the external sphincter and urine will be released through the urethra is that clear yes sir and release of the urine process called micturiation okay a dialysis it's simple so one more thing what is the kidney kidney stone kidney stones are known as renal calculi and they are small crystal of calcium oxalate and uh, oxalic acid or oxalate is found in the tomato uh, brinjals and uh, all these uh, member of solanaceae family right so that is the kidney stone kidney stone is not any stone or it's not made up of silica this is just made up of uh, the some chemical which is known as the salt that is called calcium oxalate gly glyoxalate uh, calcium glyoxalate salt right so what is the hemodialysis or what is the dialysis when the kidney of a person are not working properly then what happen you have to filter your blood with the help of machine so from one side of your body blood goes into machine machine filter the your blood remove the urea and then uh, from another pipe the blood is refilled inside your body so this process is called hemodialysis then hemodialysis we put a syringe and with the help of that syringe and pipe the blood is taken out and blood is removed from the radial artery right so radial artery are found here near the radius part right radial artery so blood is taken out from the radial artery then there is a pressure gauge which measure the pressure of blood blood is removed for the cleaning and then heparin is infused what is the function of heparin anti coagulant very good it is anti coagulant or anti clotting agent like it do not allow blood so external blood is coming out of the body it do not get clot to ensure that we inject the heparin now there is a pressure this uh, the pressure motor this uh, pressure motor or blood pump it pump the blood and then blood goes passes through some cellophane membrane right so these are these are the uh, the membrane small small pipelines which are made up of cellophane membrane when blood is passing through the cellophane membrane the urea diffuse out into dialyzer right urea diffuse out into dialyzer and blood again is in uh, again is infused inside the body right again is blood goes back into the body and uh, dialyzer dialyzing fluid goes from one side and come back to another side and uh, through this cellophane membrane the urea passes out blood blood do not blood component do not come out right so that's how the hemodialysis is done and dialyzer work clear yes sir
I think next is neural control and coordination. Next chapter is Okay, come to the neural system and its function or neural control and coordination. Look, so before starting this chapter, we have just two minutes. Go through with your chapter, go, go through with your that uh, excretion uh, part, uh, uh, go through with your NCRT in a glance and ask me if you have any doubt. Please, then I will go ahead. No doubt or is there any doubt? Okay, so let's start with the neural system and its function. What are the function of neural system? Look. Animal perform three main function neural system. Receiving, processing and responding. What is the receiving? Receiving is stimulus. Now you will tell me what is the stimulus and who will tell me what is the stimulus or a stimuli? What is the stimulus or stimuli? It's a signal. Sorry. Yes, Anya, tell me. What is the stimulus? It's a signal. Yeah, it's a type of signal, right? Look. So it's external. Right, it's external. Received from afferent nerve. Afferent. Okay. Now let me tell you uh, how we define a stimulus, right? Suppose that touching any hot object, that is a stimulus. Uh, light, uh, strong light is falling on us, that is a stimulus, right? Wind is flowing, that is a, a stimulus, right? So uh, a stimulus is any kind of physical or chemical change, any kind of physical or chemical change taking place in environment and against which our nervous system responds is called stimulus. Right? If your nervous system is not responding, it's not a stimulus for you. So a stimulus is a singular word and a stimuli are plural word. Right? So any kind of physical or chemical change. That is a, the presence of light, changing of temperature, that is a physical change. Right? And uh, this changing in the composition of air and uh, that is uh, rainfall and all that, they are the chemical change, right? So, 
there are two kinds so this is the stimulus right a stimulus uh, can be any kind anything right now uh, there are two kind of the nerve so nerves are those wire which bring these information to our brain and bring back order of the brain right so suppose that i have touch a hot object what will happen the heat sensor are present in our skin they will take this message from my hand to the backbone to the brain so they are bringing messages in the direction of brain right so those those uh, wires or those neurons which take messages to the brain they are called sensors clear now what brain will do brain will take some order it will give some order it will take some uh, decisions right so those there are certain nerves those nerves which bring back the order of brain they are called motor nerves right so there are two kind of the nerves sensory and motor right the animal have three main function receiving processing and response receiving that is it's receiving the signal processing in the brain they are processing the messages and responding that order which is given there right uh, there is a note that sponges means porifera phylum that question i been asked sponges or porifera do do not have any kind of the nerve or neuron right this is the only animal phyla which do not have any nerve cell now what's about the human neural system our neural system in our nervous system so there are two main part of our nervous system cns and pns what is cns that is called central nervous system which is found in the central part of our body right and it include brain plus spinal cord so spinal cord is not just meant for the uh, walking or it's not meant for keeping us straight rather it is uh, its main function is to work as a uh, coordinator of brain right so central nervous system include two things brain and backbone pns is called peripheral nerve system which is found outside of our body right it is but a cause it is further categorized by the two nerves cranial nerves and spinal nerve cranium root this part is called cranium so those nerves which directly come out of the brain or neck part they are called cranial nerve so this upper part of the spinal cord and from the cranium they are called cranial nerves below this cervical part the rest of the part rest of the part that originate from the spinal cord they are called spinal nerves so pns is made up of two kind of the nerve cranial nerve and spinal nerves you can see this is the central nerve system and this is the peripheral nerve system or pns right is that clear yes sir okay uh this is the function of pns how does the pns function peripheral nerve system functions i have already told you which take in something this is called afferent pro efferent process which take away that is called afferent process so what happened these are the skin receptor so there are certain receptors which are found in the skin they feel heat cold and touch in tactile response and all that they are skin receptors they will take the messages they will take the messages to the brain right okay? in brain they will take this this is the brain this is the pons this is the medulla and this is the parts of hyoid right? so they will take messages to the backbone from backbone to the brain brain have a particular area called sensory area that area will receive the messages right there are some skin receptors which are taking this message and this message reaches to the sensory area so look this message is taken towards the brain so i have already told you what we will call them we will call them sensory nerve fiber sensory nerve fibers are those nerve fibers which taking message from the tissue to the central nerve now uh, these the uh, sensory are called afferent nerve fibers because they are taking taking message in now what will happen there are there is another area in the brain that is called motor area motor area what motor area will do motor area will take the decision 
and will give decision to the neurons. And these neurons will reach to the muscle and uh, they are called motor right? And motor nerves are called efferent process and they, they help in the functioning of, right? They uh, help uh, in the order of, uh, uh, rather than they execute the order, right? So what will happen? Uh, suppose that we have touched any hot object. So the sensory receptor, they will receive the, uh, these masses. The masses will go to the, our brain and uh, the decision will be taken and our hand will be pulled, pulled back, right? So this is the our peripheral system, functional function of peripheral nerve system. That's how uh, the peripheral nerve system function. Tell me, is it clear or not? Yes, sir. This is the structure of neuron. A question which I've been asked frequently, what is the function of Nissel's granule? Or Nissel's granules are, Nissel's granules resemble which? Same question I have given a question paper. I was taking day before yesterday. We taken a test, final test, poor final test too, in a batch. So I have given this question. That's why this is in my mind. Tell me guys, what is the function of Nissel's granule? And the second, myelin sheath is secreted by which cell? Two questions. Put some pressure on your brain. This is granular help in the carrying of signal. Hmm? Carrying of? To transport the signal from it. Transport information? Affirmation. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? And what about the this one? Swan cells? So they secrete my sheet. Ah, very good. Like, tell me also, initial granule, what they, they, they do? Nissel's granules are exclusively found in the neuron cells. They are not found in other cells of the body. I haven't seen these Nissel's granules. And still the scientists are not confident what is their function. But I have seen two questions. Even in fact, I have given both of the questions in that paper. Right. Uh, the first function of Nissel granule is according to the majority of scientists that they are responsible for the protein synthesis in the neuron. The second thing, Nissel's granules are... Uh, uh, Nissel's granules are basically, uh, they are, uh, they resemble with the function of the, they resemble with the ribosome. Obviously, they resemble with the ribosome. These are the two questions, remember these two questions. And the third question which I told you, that is all that I have been asked many times. So, obviously, Schwann cells are the responsible for secretion of the uh, myelin. So, look, the question comes from the diagram as well. The question comes from the structural part as well. Right? So, you need to understand. So, nephron, neuron is the basic structural and function. One more question. Tell me. Listen me clear, carefully. This is also a very good question. Ne uh, we have already... No, no, we haven't gone through. We haven't gone through the cell biology, but this question is from cell biology. Neurons are found in the... Interphase of cell cycle, interphase of cell cycle, M phase of cell cycle, G naught phase of cell cycle, G1 phase of cell cycle. Neurons are found or neuron remains in the interphase of cell cycle, uh, G1 phase of cell cycle. S phase of cell cycle, G naught phase of cell cycle. So G naught phase. G phase. Okay. Anyone else? Interphase. Very good. Excellent. Please note it down. Neurons always remain. Note it down. Neurons always remain in the interphase of cell cycle. They keep on growing. They never divide. 
please note down this statement neurons are found in the interface of cell cycle full stop they do not divide or they stop divide dividing they stop dividing after birth of and is will they stop dividing after birth of and is will full stop if they get damage if they get damage they can be neither they can be neither regenerate or recovered if these cell get damaged you cannot regenerate them right they just grow they neither divide nor get repaired right so look one more thing this is the longest nerve of this is the longest cell of a uh, animal body so what can be the maximum length of a neuron and which is the longest neuron of human body tell me look note it down a single cell may be up to the single cell may be up to 90 cm longer the single cell may be up to it is written over here the single cell may be up to 90 cm longer and the longest cell is let me write it down and the longest cell longest neuron of neuron of human body body is cytic nerve cytic nerve it is found cytic nerve is basically found uh, in uh, uh, near our thigh region this thigh part right so this is the longest thing now look this is the nerve uh, nerve cell and this uh, upper part this head part is called soma or body this middle part is called axon and this last part is called root right and uh, axons or soma or body soma or body it have uh, some branch like structure these are called dendrites dendrite are called afferent process because they take the information from external environment right so dendrites are they take the information they keep or uh, they uh, they are found in the whole body right they they kept spread in the whole body surface right they take all kind of the stimulus so they take information from external environment that's why they are called afferent process dendrite take the information and the cytoplasm which is filled inside this neuron this is called neuroplast or nerve cell right so this is neuroplast then what happen there is a large prominent nucleus uh there is a nissel granule they are responsible for protein synthesis i have already told you this part is called axon second part is axon axon remains covered with or insulated with a sheath sheath means covering this sheath is called myelin sheath myelin sheath is made up of a protein name as myelin right myelin is secreted by the schwann cells try to understand the schwann cell they secrete the myelin and myelin cover the neuron right now what is the function of this myelin sheath myelin sheath increases the rate of information flow note it down myelin sheath increases the speed of myelin sheath increases the speed of information in neuron right the last part is called root again one more important myelin sheath may be or may not be in neurons that is not compulsory that myelin sheath should be every in every neuron that is not compulsory myelin sheath may or may not be it depends it may if it is present then the rate of information flow will be more or the speed of information flow will be more but it, if it's not present then speed will be very slow right one more 
two neurons not directly generally 99% two neurons not directly remains in connection with each other so between two neurons there is a gap or junction suppose that information have to go to from here to here so information will travel from one neuron to another neuron so between two neurons there is a junction or a gap this junction or gap is known as synapses synapse this junction or gap is known as synapse so how does the information is transferred when both or both neurons are not in contact with each other how does the information flow take place try to understand information flow take place uh, uh, through a chemical the root of a neuron secrete a, a neurotransmitter and the dendrite of another neuron take this neurotransmitter so because of this neurotransmitter information is transferred so one thing the junction or gap between two neuron is called synapse and the information from one neuron to another neuron is transferred through the neurotransmitter this is the longest cell and uh, one uh, a human may have 100 billion of neuron uh, nerve they never divide or they remain always remain in interface the longest now i have told you that uh, is uh, the human body sciatic now and uh, neuroplasm contain uh, neuroplasm nucleus mitochondria golgi er lysosome ribosome and nucleic uh, and initial granule and most probably they responsible for protein synthesis and uh, Exolima, what is the exolima? So exon has exolima. Exon is surrounded by a membrane that is called exolema. Then there is a liquid or fluid or that is called exoplasm. Then exons are afferent process because they take away the information, right? Then uh, uh, neuron may be myelinated or non-myelinated. So myelinated neuron always have Schwann cells. So that's it for the neuron. Go through with it and tell me if you have any doubt. So even in G zero phase, the cell will not divide, right? Exactly. But they even they do not grow. They remains in cohesion chain. And uh, yes, they do not grow. But neurons keep on growing. In our body, even me, you and me, they are just growing, but they do not divide. So that's why it is considered that they remains in the interface of cell. Okay, right. Okay. This so is the very in cardiac cells. It it won't divide and it won't grow as well. That's why exactly. it is in G zero phase. Yes, yes, right. Else, uh, otherwise, you know what would have happened if cardiac cell will divide? They will keep on growing. Our heart size will increase, but our heart size remains uh, at particular of particular size. It remains just like a fist. Yes, sir. Any more question? What is the nobody asked me? Let me ask you. What is the function of node of Ranvier? It is written over here. I have seen the question from here as well. It's a very simple question, by the way. But you know, 30% question will be simple only. Not every question will be the tougher one. What is the function of node of Ranvier? I have written over there. Branches arise. Means the neuron may be branched or unbranched. The branch neuron, the branches come out from the node of Ranvier, right? Look. This is the human brain. Human brain remains inside a uh, this human brain remains inside a box that is called cranium. Inside the cranium, there are certain membranes, they are called meninges. Right? Uh, this upper uh, pink color part is called pore brain, right? And this violet color part is called mid brain. This is the smallest one. Then this blue color and this flower like structure, this is called height brain, right? Uh, there are certain glands which are found in the uh, in, in the our uh, brain. So 
so as you can see this is the pituitary gland pituitary gland is the master gland and we will study regarding this this gland in our uh, chemical coordination part and there are one another gland gland which is a bit superior to the pituitary gland this is called hypothalamus right so pituitary gland hypothalamus gland one more gland which is found over here this is the this gland and uh, this gland is called it's not given over here uh, this is uh, this gland is vestigial gland right and uh, this is also responsible for the uh, sleeping it, it uh, induces the sleeping uh, inside our body right and this is called pineal gland pineal gland so remember it have the three gland as well along with the brain part so further we have divided brain into three part fore brain middle brain and hind brain fore brain have further three part olfactory lobe cerebrum diencephalon middle brain have two part corpora quadrigemina and corpora cerebri hind brain have three part cerebellum pons viralis and medulla right the last part is called medulla this part medulla remains directly it, it 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 infuses with the backbone so medulla remains directly connected with the backbone now try to understand a cranium capacity the weight of human brain is 1220 g to 1400 g in a human being the meninges are a type of the membrane they cover our brain and protect them from external injury right one more thing. this skull uh, have a bone and below the skull there are some membrane which protect our uh, try to understand this this structure that's why i have made it with my hand right try to understand uh, this is the you know protective layer the most protective layer is this hair below the hair there is a skin below this skin there very thin layer of muscles and below those muscles there is a bone structure brain box that is called cranium inside the cranium inside our cranium then uh, there is another layer of this membrane right below the cranium inside the cranium right these are those membrane so try to understand three membrane dura mater arachnoid mater and pia mater they are called meninges right between the dura mater and arachnoid mater there is a liquid called cerebro spinal fluid right that protect our brain from the injury so this is the structure of the brain tell me is it clear yes sir remember the name of this membrane it is very very important question uh, can be asked from this part come to the fore brain this is the largest part of our brain right this is the basically fore brain so uh, uh this is the just top view when this is the side view so the brain look like like you must have seen in diagram so brain look like this one so there are certain uh, depression like structure they are called sulcus and certain uplifted part they are called gyri so complete brain is made up of sulci and gyri or sulcus and gyri then further we divide four brain so this upper most part of the brain this upper most cover that is a thick cover the largest part this is uh, further divided into three part try to understand me uh, try to understand how i am uh, how i am trying to make you learn look this is called frontal frontal means this front this is called parietal parietal means the term parietal means roof top it's latin parietal means roof top so frontal parietal and this is called temple so which are near to the temple this is called temporal right so frontal parietal temporal and back roof part is called back roof part is called occipital right so occipital back roof right so frontal parietal temporal and this occipital so we have divided our brain into four part okay now this four brain have been further divided into three part 
so this is the just physical division now we have divided four brain into three three part on the basis of their uh, structure right so first part is olfactory lobe right which is responsible for smell sensing second is cerebrum and third is diencephalon further cerebrum divided into three part frontal parietal temporal and occipital i have already told you right so olfactory lobe uh, is found in our brain four brain only and uh, it is responsible for smell sensing cerebrum is main brain eh? so thinking processing intelligentsia that all depend on the cerebrum cerebrum is the largest and most complex part it is divided into four lobe frontal parietal temporal and occipital frontal lobe is uh, creative ideas frontal lobe is responsible for creative ideas translation reality testing judgment intellectual ability uh, decision making reasoning emotion will power and personality that is all controlled by the that all depend on the in fact the frontal brain parietal brain means rooftop part this is responsible for touch pain heat and cold position and shape of any object information uh, from environment it receive the information from environment and communicating to the rest of the brain temporal lobe basically dedicated to sound language smell memory and emotion occipital this back side part visual information shape and color right then diencephalon so diencephalon is basically it work as a thermostat it control the body temperature means maintain the body homeostasis keep the body in the balanced form right it maintain the body temperature 37 degrees centigrade uh behavioral activities appetite thirst satiety means feeling of satisfied and uh, respiration and heart right so these are the function of four brain you have to remember try to remember almost all the things tell me if you have any doubt this is the largest and most complex part of the brain is that clear clear yes can you move the slide yes, over down okay sure come to the mid brain so mid brain is further divided into uh, two part so mid brain is the smallest part of the brain it do not have much more function so the main function of uh, like it work like a data cable it transfer uh, data or transfer information from one part of the brain means 
frontal and that one uh, that, that uh, forebrain and hide brain so uh, but yes there are corpora quadrigemina so there are two part corpora quadrigemina and corpora cerebri corpora quadrigemina is responsible for sense of sight and hearing right corpora cerebri that uh, transport impulse uh, impulses between cerebrum cerebellum and part of the uh, and uh, pons and medulla right to transfer information from high brain to frontal brain Hide brain, the function of hide brain is the most important. They are most frequently asked part. Hide brain is further divided into three parts. Cerebellum, that is called little brain, that means little brain, pons varali and medulla. Try to understand. So let me open again the diagram of the brain. Look, this flower-like structure is called cerebellum. This part is called pons and the lower one called medulla. Medulla remains connected with the backbone. Look, uh, medulla oblongata. It connects, uh, this question I've been asked many times. It connects its spinal cord to the cerebellum, right? Means height. So it connects its spinal cord with the cerebellum. It regulates the heart rate. Blood pressure, breathing, swallowing, salivation, uh, sneezing, vomiting, and coughing. Right? That is all controlled by the medulla oblongata. So this was function of the high brain. This part was very important for your. Uh, that will how to say uh, your board examination but it's not that much important for you uh, but still you need to understand it how does it work uh, transmission of nerve impulse how the current flow in our neurons that is called transmission of the nerve so how the information flow in our neurons or in the wires of our body that is well explained by a theory that is called membrane ionic theory of nerve impulse the question I have been asked who given this thing. That question I have seen. So basically how the information flow in our neuron that has been explained by two scientists, Hudkin and Huxley in late 1930s. This theory states that electrical events in the nerve fiber generated by the differential permeability of the membrane for sodium and potassium ion, right? This permeability is regulated by electric field across the brain. There are two main parts for stages of nerve. The first one is called, that is called resting membrane potential. A resting membrane potential is that state when our nerves are not working, means our neurons are not working. They are in ideal mode or they are in uh, resting mode. That is called resting membrane. Action potential, when some stimulus comes, suppose that someone touched me, right? When a stimulus comes, due to that stimulus, now they start uh, working, right? So that is called action potential, when nerve impulse is running. At the normal stage, means at the resting potential, also called polarized stage, both are the same things. Try to understand. In resting potential, all polarized state, what happened? This is the nerve. This is A side, this is B side and C side. And inside there is a neuroplasm. What happened? There are sodium potassium pump. Normally, they throw three sodium outside and bring two potassium inside. Right? Then what happened? Three positive charge outside and two positive charge inside. Right? The upper surface have a layer of positive charge. And inner surface have a layer of negative charge. Right? So there is a positive charge outside and negative charge inside. Now what happened when depolarization takes place? Means some stimulus come, somebody touched. Now these channel, these sodium potassium pump, they get reverse, right? How do they get reverse? Then what will happen? When they get reverse, what will happen? They will start now three sodium ion will start coming inside. Three sodium ion will come inside and two potassium ion will go outside. So what will happen at this A side, 
try to understand at this a side when threshold stimulus is applied is um, then rapid influx of sodium ion start sodium ion will start coming out in and potassium ion will go out say what will happen due to which this a side will have positive charge in inner surface and outer surface in negative charge now this positive charge then current will flow from a to b right inside then b to c that's how the information will flow the polarity will get reverse it is called action potential of nerve impulse current will flow from side a to b in inner side of the surface on outer side current will flow from the b to a that's how then the in inner side current will flow from b to c then outer side from c to b that's how the current flows in our neurons and this is explained by the action potential theory tell me is it clear or not clear sir great abhinav is it clear anna yes sir great yes sir alia what's about you and uh, there is someone else are you new one uh, baba shera am i pronouncing correct name or not okay, okay that's great if you got all this point by the way the least chances are to ask this question you have to remember who given hartkins and now the how the impulses are transmitted from one neuron to another neuron right so i have already told you the junction between two neuron is known as synapse or some some people call it naps right so junction between two neurons are known as naps or synapse now uh, how the information flow from one neuron to another neuron there are very few neurons where which remains directly interconnected right there are basically these are those neuron where information flow is very fast like the these neurons are found in only brain so what happen two neurons remain directly interconnected with the help of a protein pipeline this small as one protein tube right this is structure is called gap junction this is pre synaptic neuron and this is post synaptic neuron this is uh, called gap junction so what happened sodium ion come to this point and they directly transmit to the next one these are called electrical synapses try to understand these are called electrical synapses and uh, or gap junctions the gap junctions have a small protein tubular structure that allow the free movement free movement of sodium ion between neurons and they are meant for the faster transmission right and they are basically found in brain now the second one where the transfer of information from one neuron to another neuron takes place through some chemical or neurotransmitter how does this information is transferred try to understand and this process will be helpful for us in the next chapter as well try to understand how the information is transferred from one neuron to another neuron right this is the pre synaptic node means it's a part of first neuron this is post synaptic membrane means this is the part of the another neuron there is a gap between them right what happen when the information reaches to at the tip of exon it is start absorbing second number first the information will come it will start absorbing calcium ion inside it due to absorption of calcium ion what will happen this uh, uh this vesicle will start going to the downward so calcium uh, calcium ion taken inside the cleft then synaptic vesicle move down and get rupture that is called exocytosis so this calcium this vesicle will come down they will uh, come to here and they will get rupture when they will get rupture when this vesicle will get rupture neurotransmitter will be spread in this gap or this junction 
Now, these neurotransmitters, so this is uh, the fourth one, neurotransmitter discharge in the cleft, this part. These neurotransmitters will reach to the, this one, where this, this receptor or this uh, post-synaptic uh, membrane, and there are certain channels. So when it will reach to the channel, it will open to the channel. And due to opening of the channel, sodium ion will start coming inside. And information will reach to the next neuron. That's how the chemically information reaches from one neuron to another. Tell me, go through with it and tell me if you have any doubt. Is that clear? Yes. Oh, clear sir. to all of you. Okay. Reflex section. Can anybody tell me what are the reflex sections? It's a simple. Can be asked. Response to stimuli without thinking about it. Very good. Very good. Actually, those things which we do frequently, they come in our reflexes. Reflex sections, uh, there is very small time for the reflex section. For example, you must have uh, sensed this thing. When we touch any hot object, suppose that I touch any hot object. So what will happen when I will touch any hot object, I will pull my hand suddenly. First, I will pull hand, then after one or two seconds, I will feel the pain. So first, the pulling back hand, this information, this decision I've been taken by backbone only. When the message will reach to the brain, then I will feel the pain. Right, because the pain sensors are available on the brain only. So this is the uh, transfer section of the backbone. Look, this person is touching hot object. Now the skin have heat receptor. It will take this this uh, uh, sense and the sensory neuron or afferent neuron they take the message to the backbone. When the message will reach reach to the backbone, but there is a very small time. Uh, the hand have to come back quickly else it will get burned. So what will happen when it will go to the backbone? Backbone have a special kind of the neuron that is called relay neuron. This relay will take the decision and it will give order to the motor neuron. This motor neuron will go to the muscles which have to pull back the hand. That is called effector, effector muscle, right? Motor neuron will go to the effector muscle and hand will be pulled back, right? So this pathway is called reflex R and these axons are called reflex axons. So reflex sections are those actions generally which uh, which are taken or which has done at in, in sudden, right? And uh, uh, there are two kind of the reflex action: a spinal reflex action and cerebral reflex action. In a spinal reflex action, brain is not at all involved like this way. But in cerebral reflex action, brain is also involved, like driving the car is a reflex action. You hardly see the blah, blah, clash and all that. You drive the car. Uh, playing a piano. Um, one of, like any one of you, if, if you know how to play the piano, you, you have not to see at the keyboard. You just keep on singing, keep on talking and playing like this way. So these are the typing. That is a reflection. So these are the reflections, right? Here, the brain involvement of the brain is not compulsory. And all those things which we do regularly, they come in our reflex state. Right? So, 
Now, this is the human eye. Look, today I will just explain you what is the structure of human eye. The outermost layer of human eye, look, this outermost layer of human eye is made up of the sclera. Okay, this one. The sclera. This first one. Sclera. And sclera, uh, sclera become transparent in the front part, right? And it make the cornea. So this part called cornea. So cornea is nothing, just ex expansion of sclera. Then, so I have written just first. Then after the sclera, there are this second layer that is called choroid. This is choroid. Choroid extend and it make the iris. Then the third part is called retina. This structure is called retina. Right? And this is called lens. Right? So there are three covering. Uh, sclera, cornea, choroid. Right? And then retina. Uh, our lens remains suspended with help of some suspensory ligament. Uh, these ligament can change the shape of the shape, shape of the lens, and that's how they maintain the, uh, the and that's how they adjust the focal length. Right? Again, so this cornea part it keep on absorbing oxygen from external wall. That is also important. Uh, it remains filled with so between the lens and between this uh, fr front part cornea there is a liquid that is called aqua aqua seamer keep on changing it is secreted by the cells of cornea itself what happened there is a uh, there is a pipeline called canal of skim try to understand this question i've been asked canal of skim canal of skim keep on draining out the aqua humor right and every time it is getting changed so that it remains refreshed, right? Behind the lens, this part, there is a vitreous body of vitreous sumer, right? And this liquid do not change, vitreous body or vitreous sumer, right? And uh, it always, it, it maintain the shape of the uh, eye wall, right? So we have divided and finally, there is a optic disc, there is a this even this question i've been asked multiple times so in the retina at the back side of the retina there's a depression that is called macula that depression is called macula inside that depression there is a point that is called fovea centralis we also know it's yellow spot right this fovea centralis and yellow spot have cone cells only not rod cells cone cells only this question i've been asked right this Fovea centralis have uh, cone cells on and uh, clear vision can be seen like this way. Uh, so the, at, at this point, clear vision is seen at this point. Further, from here, the information, um, all the nerves meet at the point. This is called optic disc. This is, and there is a blind spot. Here, image formation do not take space. This is the only point in the retina, blind spot, where image formation do not take space. Now all the masses are taken at this point optic disc from here they reach to the brain. The eye is divided in three parts. Outer coat that is made up of sclera and cornea. We have discussed. Middle coat made up of choroid and ciliary. And inner coat is made up of retina. Sclera is white and collision kind of the uh, uh, material. Uh, and then cornea is one sixth part of the eyeball. This is a vascular, that is no blood supply. And uh, on the, uh, this is the, uh, this, even this question has been asked. This is the first organ to, trans uh, this is the first organ to transport it in, human. both are the questions. This is the first organ transported to the human being. Look, fovea centralis or, or yellow spot. The cone cells are only found. The most distinct vision, most clear vision is made at this point. Blind spot, image formation do not take space. Next question. Canal of ischem, keep on changing the aqua humor. Then next question. The cornea is avascular, means you do not have blood supply. If you will prickle the uh, needle in cornea, the blood will not come out. Then, oh, 
once its part of the eye is uh, eyeball is transparent uh, is transparent right so this was all about the eye the next class we will go like this uh, ear is left only ear as mechanism of listening is left only the next class we will complete this one and we'll move to next chapter go through with your ncrt in this chapter whatever i we have uh, i have taught you today and tell me if you have any doubt any doubt